At the end of it, what he said was, one of God's promises to you will be fulfilled before the end of this year. I was like, God, if she's the one for me, I need you to give me this sign. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kat and this is my boyfriend. If you've been following along this series, we're finally at part three. This is the final part of how we actually ended up together and how God was evidently the one who allowed for this to happen. So without further ado, let's get right into it. If you haven't seen part one or part two, just click right here. But I know you guys just want to know how this happened. So we'll get right into the story. So if you guys remember from part two, I said that when we went to Governor's Island after the trip, I realized that I still had feelings for her. I had to fully admit to myself, to myself that, you know what? I really like her. I can't deny it anymore. And that's when I truly prayed to God. And I was like, you know what, God, I forgive her for everything. Whether she likes me or she doesn't like me, I forgive her. That's it. So then let's skip a couple of months to August. And, you know, I was kind of nervous. Uh, I wasn't, there was the first time that I was going to see her consecutively for a couple of days. And I didn't really know what to expect. I knew that I liked her, but in my mind, I was like, okay, this girl definitely doesn't like me. But I definitely prayed to God. And I was like, God, I just want the opportunity to be able to talk to her, you know, to maybe work things out, even if it doesn't end up us in us dating or liking each other, it doesn't matter. I just want to th fix things between me and her. And that's how I felt going into camp. For me, on the other hand, when I was thinking of going to camp and seeing him, my mind was to just stay completely away from him. Basically, everything I had been doing the past <laughs> yeah. year, like just completely ignore him. And I even had a dream that was kind of scary. I don't know if it was from God, probably not, but I feel like it just... Yeah, I had a dream before camp that um, we were at camp and his mom was basically yelling at my mom saying like, oh my gosh, your daughter keeps playing with my son and playing with his feelings, keep her away from him, whatever. So in my head, my whole time in camp was stay away from him, like just don't get closer and I still don't talk to him, whatever. And the whole time in camp, thankfully, by the grace of God, I was busy. I, I didn't have time to really chill or do um, like play activities and stuff where I would have talked to him um, because I was in charge of like activities and stuff. I was helping with activities and what happened was that at the end of camp, so we don't talk to each other at all, he tries to talk to me to ask me like, oh, how do I get a bracelet to be on one of the teams? And I was like, oh, ask somebody else, like <laughs> don't ask me. And then one time we were playing like ping ball or something, me and, or like little kids were playing it in camp yeah. and he was at another table that was nearby and I could just see him slowly trying to get close to I was slowly trying to get close me. to her, seeing if she would notice me, if we could play a game. But she was just like, every time I would go to a table, she would go to the next yeah. one. Then I would go to that one, she would go to the next one. Yeah. And she made it super clear, oh, I don't want to talk to you. So I took that as a hint and for the rest of the camp, even though it was like three days, I was like, you know what? She doesn't want to be pursued. She doesn't want to talk to me. You know what? Fine. I'm going to just... I'm going to leave her alone. Yeah, in my head, just him was, like, not God's will, so I wouldn't even look at him. I did feel like, oh, I still have feelings, but I was just suppressing them and, like, don't even look at him, whatever. And what happened was that during camp, I'm not going to lie, because I was so busy doing stuff, I really um, neglected, like, prayer, which is so counterintuitive because when you go to a church camp, it's to pray, it's to listen to the Word of God, it's to get closer to God, but because I was just so busy... I didn't make it a priority to pray. And because of that, I felt very burdened. Like, I felt mm -hmm. just stressed. On top of that, you know, I had feelings that I was suppressing. I was going through a lot, and a lot of people didn't notice, I don't think. Um, it was even hard for me to eat during camp because there was just so many things, like feelings that I had to suppress, um, things that I had to do. I wasn't praying, whatever. And the last service in camp completely has impacted my life forever because at the end of that service, they were singing this song called Te Buscare, which I actually included in my October worship song favorites, which you can watch there if you want. And when that, what that song says in Spanish is, I will look for you and I'll find you. Um, and it talks about when we look for God, we'll find him. And I was at a point where I was like, I'm so tired. I don't know what to do. I feel stressed. I just need God. So at the end, when they ask who would like to be, get prayed for, I didn't think about it twice. I was just like, I don't know what I need. All I know is that I need, I need God. That's it. I need prayer. So I went up and somebody started praying for me. This person holds my hands. And this is where it gets kind of crazy, like super crazy. Yeah. So he holds my hands and I don't know who it is because they haven't started speaking, 
But when they start speaking, they um, basically said, like, your life is a puzzle piece right now. Like, I know, you know, there's a lot of stuff going in your life right now. And then he said something that I had only told God in prayer. So I was someone who was super devoted, who I'm, who I'm super devoted to God, do a lot of things for God. But, you know, it comes to a point in your life when you've, you know, gone, gone through a lot that you're like, okay, God, but when is my turn? Like, what about the things that I desire and that I need? And I had only prayed that to God. And he told me that he was like, you tell God, what about me? What about my feelings? What about my desires? And when he said that, because it was something that I had only told to God, I knew instantaneously God was talking to me through him. Mm-hmm. Like instantaneously, you know, and that's how you know someone's being used by God. If they reveal something, only God knows. So I started crying like a little baby. I was there. He was there, but he was like in the back. So I was crying like a little baby because I'm like, oh my gosh, like God is speaking to me through this man. And what he and he said various other things that I don't need to say. But at the end of it, what he said was, one of God's promises to you will be fulfilled before the end of this year. And when he told me that, I started bawling and I fell to the ground, like full on fell to the ground, crying, 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 because I'm like, who am I for God to speak so clearly to me? And the whole time when I fell to the ground, I was like, okay, I've been promised various things, probably two things that I can really think of. And one of them was him, right? Like this relationship, like us being together, God had promised to me. And when I fell, like that was all I was thinking about. Because I'm like, that's the only promise that I really remember that God um, told me. And not just that, it's the only promise that I really like desire to come true. Because it's been so many years of like, or a year and five months of waiting. And, you know, I am obeying God. I'm doing what he wants me to do, but I can't negate these feelings. However, when I, when I was there and I was thinking that in my head, I'm like, there's no way. Like, I was thinking like, oh, maybe it's this. But in my head, I was like, there's no way, Kat. Like, you haven't spoken to this guy how long? Like, in camp, you don't even look at each other, nothing. So I go off from that experience. And it's like the nighttime and I'm in the camp bathroom, whatever. There's no one there. And I just remember bawling my eyes out because I'm like, yo, God clearly spoke to me. But what is the promise? And I remember praying to God after I got home. And I was like, God, like in my prayer journal, I wrote it. And I was like, God what is the promise like which promise is going to be fulfilled by the end of the year like what are you talking about (laughs) but prior before i got home um he came to camp in the same vehicle as my mother and i came to camp in somebody else's car and on the way back home i was gonna go in a different car with somebody else but that person just wasn't available anymore so what did that mean that now i had to go back in the same vehicle as my mom which he was in. God's plan. <laughs> <laughs> and what happened was that I didn't even want to go into that car. I was trying to do anything I could to go with somebody else, but it just didn't happen. I ended up being in the same car as him. His brother was in between us. He was here and I was here. And you would have thought, oh my gosh, Kat was so excited and she was how ha- No, I was upset. I was mad. And I'm like, God, like you already told me he's not the one. Like you already made it clear. I get it. And he didn't, God didn't tell me that. But like from the act of obedience that I had to do of letting him go, I assumed that. Anyways, I was in the car and I was mad. But then... (laughs) So basically, before I get into that real quick, I was, throughout the whole camp, I was praying to God. I was like, God, every morning when I would wake up and I would pray, and every night before I went to sleep, I would pray to God. I would be like, yo, God, just give me one chance, one opportunity to, like, just talk to this girl one-on-one and even though we weren't in the car alone you know he did give me that chance so we went into the car as soon as i saw her face i knew she was tight i knew there was something in her face (laughs) that told me that she was upset so then i was like okay here's the chance you know i wish we we could have had like a one-on-one conversation but i instantly knew that okay this is gonna be a long car ride which actually really wasn't and i was upset about that but (laughs) i was like i was like okay this is gonna be a long car ride car ride So I might as well talk to her, you know. So we were in the car. We started talking. And she made it extremely obvious, like super obvious, man, that she did not like me. But little did I know that it was like the complete opposite. Yeah, so I was mad at the beginning. But then I look and I turn and see homeboy, pretty boy, (laughs) Ernesto. 
And when I look at him, like, I, I'm telling you, the whole year and five months, whatever, like, I always had that blockade. I never even looked at him in the eyes. So this was a time where I had to look at him in the eyes. Like, I just had to. And when I did and we started talking, like, he was like, oh, how's this? How's that? I was like, oh, my God. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like oh, my God. I was like, yo, like, I still like him. And I was, was I upset? I don't know. I was a little confused. I'm like, oh, shoot, like, I really do like him. Like, Keep in mind, she's the greatest actress I've ever met because even though she felt that way at that moment, she was showing the complete opposite. Yeah. In my mind, when she was speaking to me, in my mind, I started praying to God. I was like, oh, God, like, I really like this girl, but she definitely doesn't like me. Like, that's it. There's literally no hope. Yeah. Yeah, because I had had that moment where I finally was like, okay, let me just be nice to him. Let's be regular. I looked him in the eyes, we started talking, and it was just like everything, all the feelings just flushed in and I couldn't resist it. However, because I just felt like the idea of him was always like, no, 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 not God's timing. Although for me, it just meant not God's will. Instead of God telling me to wait, I just always thought it meant it's not God's will. I was I was saying things that just didn't go with how I truly felt. So I was like, oh yeah, I don't like anyone. There's no one I like. I was, now. I was so upset. And I then was I was like, like oh my I was goodness. making comments of like, yeah, guys, you know, once they stop talking to a girl, like they just move on to a next one. Because in my head, I thought I didn't. I wasn't even fully sure if he still liked me. So in my head, I was saying things to kind of like, just like, get over him. Um, and I didn't want to give him any type of sign that I was interested. So even though in that moment I realized I was, I just felt like I'm not gonna make it seem like that. Like I don't want to make the same mistake we made before. Mm-hmm. That was my biggest fear. Like, logically thinking, like, literally everything that I saw in my head was like, yo, this girl does not like you. But there was always this hope in the back of my head of like, yo, maybe things will work out. Maybe, And I hated that. That would get me so upset. So when they find, they took her home first and then they took me home. But when they took her home, you know, she left. I was in the car. I was just thinking. I went home. I took a nap. I didn't even want to be awake. I was just like, dang, like, like, this sucks, man. Like, she doesn't like me. God, I forgave her. I don't care how long I have to wait for her, I will, but just give me the strength. And, you know, I was just, I was sad. I was sad. I remember waking up the next day, I was sad. The only way I felt better was when she would text me, honestly, because I was just overthinking everything. I was like, man, like, God, I'm literally trying to get over her. It's been over a year. This this, this whole process has been two years, and I'm trying all I can to do your will. I'm trying everything to get over her, like, God, speak to me. Tell me if this is your will because, like, it's been such a long time and I'm still not over her. Like, what in the world is going on? And it's it's not logical, but a lot of times God God does things that, in, in, at the time, it doesn't seem logical, but mm-hmm. it yeah. ends up being his will. And there was a reason you felt that because I did have feelings. I just never showed them because I felt like I was just afraid of going back to square one of, like, talking and not talking. Like, oh, it's not God's time. Let's stop talking. You know what I'm saying? All that stuff. But anyways, what happened was that after camp, I felt really sad. Well, actually, after camp, I had a conversation with my mom, and I was like, Mom, I need you to pray. And you're going to laugh when I tell you this. And she was like, in her head, she thought I was going to say, like, oh, you still like Ernesto, but she didn't say that. She was like, oh, what what are you going to ask me to pray for? And I was like, I want you to pray so that God could give me a husband. (laughs) And she started dying. And she was like, what happened at camp? Like, what conversations do you have at camp that made you think that? But little did she know, or anybody knew, Cause I had a whole prayer team. Like I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you how it happened. But basically, like little did did she know or anybody know that I was asking and praying and asking other people to join me in prayer so that God could finally, you know, bring me a husband. Obviously, before having a husband, he needs to be your boyfriend. Obviously, but I was like, I'm trying to be specific with God. I do not want to waste my time. I do not want any of that. I have faith that God could come through, and that's it. So, um, why I was praying for that after camp was because I realized I still liked him and I felt like. It wasn't God's will, right? So I was like, if he's not the one for me, God, you need to bring whoever it is quickly because I cannot (laughs) stay liking someone who is not for me for a year. and Like, that's just not healthy. That's how I felt. I felt like I was going crazy. And then I started telling my friends and I was like, you know, I've, I've been single my whole life. So I never was the type of friend to be like, oh, I can't wait to have a boyfriend. No, ever. But I was getting to the point, not just in my feelings for him, but in just in general. And as a woman, I feel like you know it. As a man, you probably know it too, where it's like, you just feel like it's time. Like, it's time to find someone. Like, you feel like you're you're strongly identified in your relationship with Christ. You feel like you're ready. 
and I feel like I was ready. And I started telling like the leader that chose us to be youth ministers together. I started, I texted her and I was like, hey, can you pray so that God can give me a husband? Mm -hmm. I feel like it's time. She started praying. She's like, oh, is there someone that you're into? And I was like, no, there isn't. There's nobody. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, no, it's just, I just think it's time. I started telling my friends and I'm like, and there was only one friend or a few friends. Yeah, one friend that I had told why. And I was like, hey, or I think two friends, I don't know. I was like, hey, I'm praying for this because I can't get over this guy. And I, I think it's not healthy. Um, and it, it just got to a point where I was really sad and depressed because I felt like I missed him and I needed to get over him. And it just couldn't be. It's like, oh, you like this person and you want to be with them, but it just can't be. So get over it. So that made me really sad. And then my mother noticed and she was like, why are you so sad? Yeah. And I was like, no, nothing, nothing. She's like days after days she was like yo why are you so sad like what's going on and it just came to a day where i was like okay i'm praying about this and i'm telling everybody but the person who can actually solve this which is or not solve this but the person who can give me the consent right to like go ahead with this because if i want to do it the right way i don't just want to message him privately in secret and do the same thing as before no i want it to be open i want it to be purposeful i want everybody to know um or at least the people i care the most about to know so I told her, hey, I still have feelings for this guy. And she was like, dude, are you even sure he still likes you? Like, <laughs> what What if he brings a girlfriend to church? What are you going to do? And I was like, hey, I'm okay with that because that will give me a reason to get over him. Boom. Solution. He could find his person. I could find my person. Whatever. Like, I know that I can live without him because I have, but I don't want to. And there's this thing where it's like, I need to figure out if he's even, like, I just need to figure out if this is even gonna go anywhere. And what happened was, she was like, okay, I respect it. You know, you're grown, you know what you're doing. And I just couldn't get over all that. And I texted him. So during that time, while she, she was very depressed, she was praying, <laughs> she was trying to find a husband. I became so frustrated because I just, I just couldn't handle it anymore. I was like, God, please. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why I can't keep her out of my head, but but you need to help me out. So then I it came to a point where I was like, you know what, God, there's no chance this is going to happen, but I'm going to ask you for a sign. And I, I told him, I was like, God, if she's the one for me, I need you to give me this sign. And then I told him, if she's the one for me, if you want me to be with her, I want her to text me or to call me or any of that and that I want her to admit to me that she likes me, that she still likes me. Keep in mind, in my head, logically, and from everything she's told me and, and everything that's happened, there was a 0% chance that she liked me because she just kept on saying no, 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 no. But it's like deep in my spirit, in my mind, in my soul, I just felt like, okay, me and her, there's still a connection there. But I just thought she didn't like me. I just thought she didn't like me. So I was in my head, I was literally asking God for the impossible and he did the impossible. I was like, God, yo, in, in the name of Jesus, God, you need to show me this sign. If she really likes me, if this is, usually the man is the one who, who uh, pursues the woman. But I was like, you know what, God, I want her to admit to me. And then <laughs> if she admits that to me, then I'm going to pursue her. And that's it. And here's the thing in life. We have to be consistent. I didn't do that prayer once. I did that prayer a bunch of times. Weeks went by. Maybe like a whole month went by. And then one day, it was this beautiful sunny Sunday. <laughs> I woke up. I was That day, I was going to get ready to do a Bible study because uh, that, that week, that upcoming week, I had to do a Bible study for the youth. And I remember after church service in Zoom, she texted me. and She was like, oh, hey, uh, how's it going with the Bible study? And in my mind, I'm like, yo, wait a minute. This girl is being extremely nice to me. Like, she never checks up on me about Bible studies and stuff. I was like, okay, this is weird. That day, I was going to go watch a movie with my brother. And I was literally, like, praying in the shower. And I was I was praying to God. And I was like, yo, God, this is what I don't understand about this girl. One day, she's nice to me. The next day, she's dry. Lord, please just give me the sign. Give me the sign. And then it was later on at night. It was like 12.45 a.m. I literally remember these things. I literally remember it. And I was, for, I usually have my phone by my side, just in case anybody texts me or whatever, but I just like threw my phone to the side. I was uh, working on the Bible study. It was 12, 45 minutes went by, and then I checked my phone. And, and then it was, keep in mind, it's late, it's late. <laughs> I checked my phone, and it's Catherine, and the message says, hey, Ernesto, dot, dot, dot. dot, dot. dot. <laughs> 
like that. I was like, yo, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I, I think it said hey. Da, da, da. It said no. I think it said okay. hey and that stuff. And then I was like, yo, I'm not gonna lie to you. I kind of got hyped. I was like, wait a minute. This is this is not normal because it's late and she just texted me. So I texted her real quick. It was like 45 minutes past, but I was like, oh shoot, I need to text her back. And I was like, hey, uh, what's wrong? What happened? And she didn't text me, and I was like, oh man, she probably fell asleep. But then she texted me, and and what did he tell me? Yeah. So basically, I after speaking to my mom, I felt like this thing in my heart just saying like, you have to find a solution to this. Like I just wanted a solution. And it got to the point where I was like, this is distracting me from ministry and so many things that I need. To, I just need to confront him and talk to him about it. So I texted him really late at night because I just couldn't wait till the next day. And he spent 20 minutes. He sp- you spent like 20 minutes to respond. So 20 in my head, or 45. Around, so think. in my head, I'm like, all right, so if he responds tomorrow, I'm going to just tell him I prayed about it and it's whatever. And like, we don't have to talk about it, whatever. But he responded. And then when he responded, I, I was honest with him. Afraid, what did I say? She was, she told me, oh, I don't know if if this is the right thing to do, but it's been affecting oh, yeah. me, and I, I just need to ask you one thing. And she wrote, do you still like me? Question mark. And when she told me that, I was like, wait a minute. I need her to tell me first because that's that's what I asked God. And I was like, okay, I'll answer that, but, like, can you please answer <laughs> first? I was like, can you please answer first? Do you like me? And she was like, yes, yo, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I honestly couldn't believe it after, like, it felt like years, even though it was like one year and five months, it felt like Mm -hmm. years after her denying and denying and denying. (laughs) I knew deep down, God literally, the Holy Spirit put that in my head. Don't give up, Ernesto. Don't lose hope. And that's exactly what happened. When you least expect it, that's when God um, does his thing. Mm -hmm. And there I admitted to her, I was like, yeah, I like you too. Mm-hmm. He said, no matter how hard I've tried, I can't get you out I of I literally head. told her, I don't care how corny it was. I don't yeah. care. I was like, yo, no matter how hard I've tried, I just can't get you out of my head. And, you know, she said the same thing. So yeah. we talked for, like, how long? Like, two hours there? One hour? Yeah, because we were, like, talking about, like, everything. Well, basically, when he said that, I was like, okay, like, we need to figure this out. Because in my head, I was like, I've gone through so much emotionally because of all of this. Like, we need to figure this out. So I was like, okay do you want to fast and pray about this? Like, should we meet up to talk about it? Can we meet tomorrow? And he was like, oh, I have to get my hair done. Like, he had to cut his hair, and he wanted to get, like, all pretty or whatever. Of course. (laughs) To see me. And we waited a few days, but I was fine with that because ultimately I was like, if it's God's will, even if it's a no, I know and I trust that what God has for me is the best. Even if it's not him, it's going to be even better. So I was, like, super calm, and I was like, okay, cool, we're going to meet up. And when we met up, it was as friends. Like, there was no flirting. There was no kissing. I finally gave him, like, a full hug because I would always yeah, give him, like, a, a side, side hug. hug. She wouldn't even look at me straight in the eyes. Yeah. It I was kind of weird in a way because it's like we literally throughout this two-year process of us not dating, we only met in person alone, like, one time. Yeah. And then after that, when we would talk for hours and hours and hours, we would never meet up in person. We would It was texting and phone calls and FaceTime and that's it. So when we actually met up again for the second time within two years, it it was it felt kind of a little bit weird at first. Mm-hmm. But yo, as soon as we sat, we went to a, a little park. We went to a bench. We sat down. As soon as we started talking, and I told her my intentions with her, her intentions with me, mm-hmm. we were so comfortable. And the crazy thing is that we didn't even feel those like temporary butterflies mm-hmm. that everybody feels. It felt so normal. Like, it felt It peaceful. felt normal. It felt peaceful. It felt... It's kind of like... You can't really find a word to describe it, but it felt yeah. like this is this right. Mm-hmm. This is right. This is the right time. Like, everything that's happening right now, it, you just felt peace. Like, that's what happens when it's when something is God's will. You just feel peace. Yeah, and that's no what confusion. we felt at that moment. And that's how we knew, yo, this is God's will because there's no confusion. There's no hiding anything from anyone. We're and being we just super feel, honest. Yeah, we're being honest. We know our intentions with each other. And we just feel peace. We know that this is the right time. Yeah. So we met that first time. And that's when he told me what he told you guys of like that he he when he thought of a wife, he thought of me and all those things. So from the beginning, like he made it clear that if we actually were going to date or when we were going to date, like it was with the intent of getting married. Like he couldn't see anybody else. And I was like, yeah, like I feel the same way. Obviously, I didn't tell him that God had revealed certain things to me. I didn't tell him that yet. I just knew inside of me, like, wow, like, God is so real. Because, look, he's saying it without me telling him. 
Because you know some people, they be like, oh, I had a dream that you're my husband, you're my wife. And they talk, they try to manipulate you for yeah. that. So I was like, I'm never going to tell him. And then he tells me that. And I'm like, wow, he himself has come to that conclusion. And I've already known this, but like he he's saying this. And it felt really special. We didn't even hold hands or anything because I was very adamant of we're not going to, we both were very adamant of we're not going to rush things. We're going to take it slow. Mm -hmm. And if we're friends right now, we're friends. That's it. So we met up various times to just see like if it was real because we had never met up in person. So we're like, we've talked for two years. We know each other pretty well because we've said a lot and shared a lot. But is this real? Do we still, are we still interested in each other if we meet up a few times? So we did that. Nothing happened. Just like friends. And the chemistry was still there. We definitely liked each other, but you know, we didn't rush things. We were yeah. just getting to know each other, seeing each other in person. Bound, like strict boundaries, like super strict boundaries. We made it. During that time, it was like preparation for dating because every time we met up, and we wouldn't go on a date. No, we would go to the bench. And I made it very clear. I was like, I don't want to go on a date with you. I want it to be just like us sitting down and talking because when we're married, that's really what's going to be. Do I like your presence? Yeah, exactly. Do I like what you say? Like, do we get along? Or, you know, like if you're constantly going on dates to get to know someone for the first time, that's great and that's awesome. I'm not against it, but... Sometimes you could get so caught up in the fun and all that that you forget, like, do I even like this person? Yeah, exactly. So we're like, let's take all of that and let's just sit on a bench and see if we still could stand each other. And we did. Like, and it was awesome. Like, yeah. we would talk for hours and it, it was better than, than, than before. It was yeah. way better than before. So it was definitely worth it. And, you know, then that's when we would meet up a couple of times and then she it came to the point where she told me, hey, uh, I have never told you this before, but God gave me, a, not a couple, God gave her a lot of signs yeah. <laughs> that and this was his him, will. I showed him my prayer journal where mm -hmm. I wrote all of it. Like, all of it. Like, look, read. This was from November 2019. This happened. This happened. The sign that really stood out to me was the one from camp when the pastor told her that one of the, sign, one of the promises that God promised her was going to be fulfilled before the end of the year. That was crazy. So that was pretty crazy. And I couldn't believe it when she told me that. And that's, other than us feeling that peace, that was another sign that what God had for us, um, it, it was going to be fulfilled. And keep in mind, this was around October. So yeah. the end of the year was already approaching. This was 2021. Yeah. And, and I didn't expect, like, after the guy told me that and revealed that from God to me, I didn't, like, yes, he was on my mind, but there was just, I was like, wait, how are we even going to get together before the end of the year? Like, what? How? And then all that happened. The impossible happened. Then he came. He, his mom spoke to my mom. So our parents spoke to each other. He came. He spoke to my mom. And then this is when we were still meeting up as friends, right? My mom prayed for us. And it was very special. Like, prayed for us and, like, that we can be together. And we were waiting to go on our first official date to become official. But right after our, my mom prayed for us, we went and we were going to go to the same bench, talk just the same stuff. It was a little, a different bench. Oh, either on the way there, he was like, "Yo, I wish I could just date you. Like, I wish yeah, we could just date you." I was like, "Cause now. here's the thing, our, my parents gave us the blessing. Her mom gave us the blessing, and she literally prayed over us. She yeah. prayed over us. So in my, in my, I'm like, in my head, I'm like, wait a minute, like, we can, we can date now. <laughs> like, let's just date. So we were walking, and I was like, wait a minute. Why don't we just start dating? Like, I feel like it's that's it. Is the time? Yeah. And then I was like, yeah, why not? And yeah. then and that's when it became official. Yeah, so we sat on the bench. It was like 4:28 p.m. Monday, October 25th. October 25th, yeah. 2021. 2021. Before the end of the year. Before the end of the year, just like God promised and Come on, guys. God is real like. Yeah. It's crazy. God is real. And then right right when we became official, he asked me if if I he asked it like formally like would he give me the honors of being my girlfriend whatever. And I was like, yes. And it felt so normal. And then right after, he said, like, I love you for the first time, which seems pretty crazy <laughs> because we just started dating. Yeah. But it had been, like, when you have still had feelings for someone for a super long time, it's not just attraction, it's love. It's not just something passing. It is that. And I think time proved that. So it wasn't, like, scary to me that he said it. I was like, yeah. I was kind of scared of telling her that because... You know, a lot of people don't do that, but since <laughs> it was a, since it was a two year process, and I just, I waited, I waited. The only person did. I ever saw as wife material as my wife, I envisioned that even when I didn't like her, even when I didn't want to like her, 
she would always pop up into my mind and it would be Hold so up. so the only person i saw as my wife even when i didn't like her even when i didn't want to like her it was her and it would be so annoying but now i understand that was the holy spirit you know just putting that in my mind of like hey don't give up stay focused wait on my timing and that's exactly what happened yeah and then that same day we told our pastor from our church and he was so excited he was like you guys made my day he's like i couldn't have thought of a better like two people to have like a better couple like two people to have gotten together than you two and then we told the person the leader that put us together as youth leaders who i had later on had told like oh yeah we did talk but no i don't think it's gonna go anywhere and she reacted very excitingly. He told the person that one of my leaders since yeah. I was very little, and he he could not believe it yeah, at first. He, he thought I was it. joking around, and then I showed him. I was like, "Oh, she's right here with me," and he was like, <laughs> he was so shocked. Yeah. And here's the thing: before we even dated, we would we would, and I believe this is also confirmation from God that this was God's will too. Before we dated, I was like, "Yo, are you prepared?" You know, some people might disagree. Some people might say, "Oh." Uh, I don't know about this couple, oh, this and that. You know, they might criticize mm -hmm. us because everybody, at the end of the day, everybody receives criticism. But the reactions that we got from the pastor, from the leader that put us together, from one of my leaders, and the church as a whole, it was oh, yeah, it okay. was amazing. Yeah. It, everybody supported. People were happy. And I did not expect that reaction. People were so happy for us, and, you know, they prayed for us. It, it was it was very yeah, amazing. Yeah, we also announced it in church. And when we announced it in church, people were extremely surprised. Like, obviously, some people said they saw it coming, but a lot of people were surprised because, again, like we said, our church was over Zoom, so we wouldn't see each other in person. Some people were crying. Yeah, like, crying. <laughs> yeah it was crazy. The pastor, when Definitely he didn't expect it, yeah. The pastor, when he introduced it, he was talking about, like, how um, marriages are made in heaven and all that stuff. It's like... People knew um, that, like, we were just made for each other. Like, yeah. they saw him, they saw me, and then even though they were surprised for us being together because they probably wouldn't have fathomed it, it just made sense to them. And I think that also shows for anyone who's, like, considering dating someone and you're like, is this the person for me or not? Listen to wise counsel around you, right? Listen to your parents, one, right? Because the person can be for you, like he is and was for me. But it just wasn't the time. So listen to that. And also seek the counsel from the people and see how they react to you bringing up someone. Right? Because sometimes you could be like, oh, I like this guy. I think he's a Christian guy because he goes to my church or whatever. But the people that have seen that kid grow up or have seen that person in their church might know who he really is. And they, they might respond in a way that's a little bit more like, oh, you should reconsider. But if they're like, yeah, you should go for it then. Yeah. You should listen to it, but like just seek godly counsel. One, your parents, and then like your pastors and leaders. Um, yeah, and that, that really like knocked it out the park for me. So at the end of the day, um, what we learned, what I learned was that, you know, you just need to wait on God. It was worth the wait. Like, honestly... I went through a lot of pain. She went through a lot of pain, but it was worth it because if we started dating two years ago, that it just it would have been a mess. It yeah. wouldn't have been the right timing. And when we actually got together, together, it felt like it was perfect. Yeah, it was perfect timing. You know, she was in a in a better place uh, spiritually and in her life in general. I was in a better place spiritually and in life in general. And it was just God's perfect timing. You know, God knows what He does. So, and also, you know, a lot of times God blesses us when we least expect it. You know, I definitely did not see myself, like I said earlier, I, I, in my head, I'm like, yo, I'm probably going to get married when I'm 27. <laughs> and God literally blessed me like this when you least expect it. So mm -hmm. instead of worrying about it, pray about it, yeah. pray, seek God and wait. Mm -hmm. Always know that you have to wait no matter, it could be the smallest thing. It could be the biggest thing. Waiting is part of the process. Waiting is what's going to shape your character. Waiting is what's going to mature you. And that's what happened. And, yo, if God is going to bless you with something big, there's always going to be a process. And this was a big process, but it was definitely worth it. Yeah, and I think the key to take away from this, like the key verse is seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will come with it. Right? I think a lot of times we pray so fervently for a partner and a relationship or whatever that we forget, like, the kingdom of God. And I think that time of waiting, at least for me, taught me to focus just on God, like with any, with somebody, without somebody, 
God is first. So I think that's why God blesses us when we least expect it because you don't even want it anymore. Mm -hmm. You're like, I'm going to go to heaven eventually. Like, all I care is about God. If he gives me whatever he wants to give me, great. If not, great. Yep. And then that's when he comes through because he's not going to give you anything that's going to take you away from him. So remember that. Like, just see God. We make these videos because we want to show you the process and teach you how to, like, to teach you what we learned, which is to obey God and wait. But we don't want you guys to also think like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to be in a relationship. Yeah, exactly. Because that's goals or whatever. Like, number one goal is God, and then that will come. Amen. So, definitely subscribe if you want to see more videos from us. If you want to see more of Ernesto <laughs> on my channel. We really want our relationship to, um, like, just be like a peer-to-peer -peer advice type of thing. Or sharing our journey to inspire and help you. Um, because that's what my channel is about. Sharing my journey to help you through yours. So... This is a new journey, and we want to just help and edify the church and other young Christians while they date. We're not perfect. He's not perfect. I'm not perfect. But we just want to show you that it's it's possible to obey God and put him first. Amen. So thank you for watching. Definitely subscribe below. Tell us what your favorite part was. If you have any questions, definitely leave them below. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Adelante, Quiero ir, eh, estoy aquí para anunciarle ay, 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 ay. que hay una eh, nueva relación. Para el que no sabe, eh, matrimonios son hechos primeramente en el cielo. Relaciones son hechas primeramente en el cielo. ¿Qué significa eso? Hay que orar primero. Y orar y decir, Señor... ¿Con quién? ¿Quién es? Yo le voy a anunciar una pareja que públicamente después de orar por eh, años para ver si esta es la voluntad de Dios y, la, y las familias concuerden que eh, dicen sí, esto es de Dios y le declaro que esta pareja de jovencitos son una pareja. Estoy hablando de Ernesto Cabrera y Catherine Pérez.